how would you feel if someone told you they would pay you to lose weight? This question comes from a listener and from Instagram on my psychology segment box. Every Sunday, I put a question box up and I ask, what's your psychology question? And I get lots of different questions. Here's what happened. Welcome to the What's Eating You podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie, and I'm a psychologist, published author, and public speaker here to educate and validate. Enjoy the show. Hey, Steph. Very brief question for you. I know a tween, so tween is teenager, but not a teenager yet, so sort of that those younger years. I know a tween whose parents are separated, been told that the father told his tween daughter that he would pay her $1,000 if she would lose weight before Christmas. Not only did I find it horrifying, but told the family member who told me that the tween would suffer more mentally and possibly may go through an eating disorder as a result. The tween stopped eating. I'm worried where this will take her. She is about to go through puberty. Her body will change. Do you have a podcast on this? Well, we do now. And how can I help her before she suffers? This is such an interesting question and it got me thinking. And what's funny is I sort of did a bit of a Google search saying if I got paid to lose weight or people getting paid to lose weight and there was nothing about it. There was nothing negative. There was only things such as, oh, you know, pay to lose weight and join this program and do that. There was nothing about paying a family member to lose weight or paying your daughter to lose weight. So I want you to just reflect on this for a moment, right? Imagine you're a teenage girl or boy and your parents said, hey, for Christmas, I want to give you a thousand dollars, but you have to lose weight. Let's say maybe 10 kilos or five kilos or whatever it will be. How would you feel Has this happened to you? When I asked this question on Instagram, I did have a few comments and people said, this makes me sick. Yes, I've been paid to lose weight before, but there was nothing positive that came with it. So I want to delve into this topic. Paying a teenager to lose weight can be controversial and problematic for several reasons. I'm going to break down the issues And then how perhaps you can engage a teenager if you are concerned about their health. Now, health and weight don't always coincide. People think just because you are in a larger body that you are unhealthy, but this is not the truth. Yes, people might have a preference to be in a smaller body, but it doesn't mean you are unhealthy or have any health problems because you are in a larger body. So I'm always going to emphasize that. There's a huge movement called Haze, Health at Any Size, that I absolutely love. And I encourage you to go look them up if this is you. If you constantly think, oh, it's for my health, it's for my health, but you've never actually had a reason health-wise to lose weight. It's a preference. Perhaps you don't like your shape. Perhaps you don't like your size, which is fine. But health, when you actually break down health, it's not healthy to lose weight. It's not healthy to be in a deficit all the time. What's healthy is eating enough so you don't feel tired all the time. What's healthy is not forcing yourself to purge. What's healthy is overeating from time to time and be like, hee hee, whoops, overate, Christmas. That's health. Whereas people have this expectation that health is being in a leaner body, is eating vegetables majority of the time and not having chocolate and very extreme. So as you listen to this, what is your definition of health? Right, back to the podcast. So what are the problems with paying someone to lose weight? Number one, you're basically saying you're not okay the way you are. You're not okay the way you are and I want you to change so badly that I'll be willing to pay you for it. What messaging does that send to your child? It's kind of a form of bribery, isn't it? 
very, at least when you pay a kid to do chores, they're getting something positive out of it. They're getting a sense of accomplishment. They're getting a sense of achievement. They're learning to look after themselves. They're learning to tidy their rooms. They're learning that, do you know what? Even when you don't feel like it, it's important to look after your space. They're learning the value of money when I do something and it makes them feel good. Whereas losing weight, it's not something that makes you feel good. The whole process is arduous. You're tired. You're thinking about food constantly. Your mental health is impaired. So I definitely think this is much deeper and a bigger problem. So the first thing is I want to talk about motivation. There's two types of motivation. We've got extrinsic motivation and intrinsic motivation. So intrinsic motivation is when you are motivated to do something from a reason within you. It's intrinsic. It's inside you. So things such as, you know what, I really want to save money because I want to go to college and be a a doctor or a counselor or something like that. Like you've got an internal drive to do something. Extrinsic motivation is external. So if you pay someone to lose weight, this relies on extrinsic motivation where the incentive comes from an external reward, money, rather than internal satisfaction. This teenager may not have even had a problem with their body until they were told by their parent who offered them to lose weight and give them money for it. This can lead to short-term compliance without fostering a genuine commitment to health. And the other message this sends is, I will love you and accept you conditionally. I will give you this money conditionally. And unless you were this way, you're not deserving of the money for Christmas. So I wouldn't be surprised if growing up, this teenager develops these beliefs and feelings about not being good enough. And especially given that she's going through puberty, her body is going to change. Her hormones are going to change. It is such a dangerous time for dieting. This is where it's prime time to ruin your metabolism, to ruin your adrenals, to, you know, mess around with your hormones. It's really not what you want to be doing. The second problematic behavior with this of paying a teenager to lose weight is the potential for unhealthy behaviors and eating disorders, okay? Disordered eating financial incentives can lead to unhealthy behaviors such as skipping meals, using diet pills, or engaging in extreme dieting to achieve weight loss goals quickly. Do you remember the biggest loser? That is an example of paying someone to lose weight because whoever loses the most weight gets the financial reward. And they used to do the most extreme things on that show. They used to feel so guilty and make them so make them feel guilty when they ate a cookie or they'd show footage of someone in the fridge at night and, oh, they used to do extra cardio sessions and extra exercise sessions. That's just really unhealthy. And some people do engage in really unhealthy behaviours when there is a deadline or an external incentive, like, oh, I'm going on a holiday. Do you know what? I'll just do laxatives and diet pills. doesn't work. It does not work. And just remember, the biggest predictor of weight gain is dieting. So if you want to gain weight over a 5 to 10 year period, go on a diet. Yeah. The second thing is you're focusing on weight, not health. Paying for weight loss shifts the focus to numbers on the scale rather than overall well-being potentially overlooking other important health factors such as nutrition, mental health, and physical fitness. For example, things you could do, especially for a teenager, right? As a teenager, you don't have much money. I remember when I was a teenager, I think my dad might have paid for my gym membership because I really liked going to the gym. I started weight training when I was 14 years old. And back then, obviously, you don't have much money as a teenager. I don't know about teenagers now, but you can support your child by paying for their gymnastic lessons, yeah, or paying for their gym membership and to say, do you know what? I really love that you found something that makes you happy and you're moving your body and we all know that's great for your mental health, so let me pay for your membership. 
simple swap or, hey, let's go get healthy meals together or let's food prep. And do you know what? I'll pay for the, the meal prep. All I want you to do is help me cook in the kitchen because that way I get to spend more time with you. See how we're focusing on health-related behavior and not the weight loss specifically? You want teenagers to feel empowered. You want them to feel like they have a choice. So if you can engage them in activities that promote health-related behaviors with you or that remove the barriers of them engaging in health-related behaviors such as paying for a gym membership or paying for a community or a swimming squad or whatever it is, then that would be more effective than something like this because it's more long-term and it's more sustainable. By paying someone to lose weight, someone who doesn't know a lot about nutrition, a lot about fitness or health can be really problematic because God knows what she's going to do to try to get this $1,000. And then what happens? What happens if she loses the weight, gets the money, What happens next? Now, the third problematic reason is the impact on her self-esteem and body image. There is enough pressure and stress in the world to adhere to the thin ideal. There is enough body image issues when you're going through puberty, especially if you get your period early, if you develop early. That has enough havoc on itself body hair, all that stuff, women don't need this additional pressure to be told that they also need to lose weight, okay? So the pressure to lose weight can lead to increased stress and anxiety, which can perpetuate negative self-esteem and body image issues. It also reinforces negative beliefs. If you offer money to your kid to lose weight, It will reinforce the idea that their worth is tied to their weight, potentially leading to long-term psychological issues that $1,000 is not going to fix. So just remember that. I've had a lot of clients, a lot of people I've worked with whose parents took them to Weight Watchers and paid for it and paid for their diet shakes and paid for their Duramine. And where did that lead you? Was it effective? What did you really need from your parent? Did you need to be told you were loved? Did you need to be told that you were beautiful and healthy at any weight, shape and size? What did you actually need from that parent? Now, I also looked into this in adults and adulthood and what that looks like. And I found some studies where they paid workers So essentially what they did was promising workers lower health insurance premiums for losing weight did nothing to help them take off the pounds. So this was obviously an overseas study and I have a lot of listeners from the UK and the USA. So I think this study might have been American because we don't use pounds in Australia. But at the end of the year, obese workers had lost less than one and a half pounds on average, which I think might be like three or so kilos, or I'll double check that, a change that was statistically no different than the minute average gain of a tenth of a pound for workers who weren't offered a financial incentive to lose weight. So basically what they're saying is people who weren't offered any money to lose weight pretty much stayed the same as those who were offered to lose weight. Our study highlights some of the weaknesses of wellness workplace programs. The study, which was published, reported the results of a year-long randomized controlled trial testing the effectiveness of financial incentives to encourage weight loss among 197 obese employees of the University of Pennsylvania. Now, I want to know how they categorized obese because if we're talking about the BMI, I'm obese, you're obese, we're all obese. The BMI is such an outdated bad measure. I don't know if I've done an episode on it, but I will because you need to know about it. So participants were asked to lose 5% of their weight. Each was assigned to one of four study groups. The control group wasn't offered any financial rewards 
So if you don't know much about studies, they've usually got a control group and the control group is the group that they compare the results to and the control group doesn't really get anything or any change. The three other groups were offered an incentive valued at $550. One group was told they would begin receiving health insurance premium discounts on a biweekly basis immediately after reaching their weight loss goal, while another was told they would receive biweekly payment premium adjustments the following year if they reached their goal. The final group was eligible for a daily payment following a lottery drawing of a randomly selected number if they met their daily weight loss goal and weighed in the previous day. So at the end, no one met the weight loss target, 5% weight loss target. Participants' average weight was virtually unchanged whether or not they had a financial incentive to lose pounds. 19% of participants did meet the 5% target, but they weren't concentrated on any particular group. It was random. And how do we know how they lost the weight? Do you know what I mean? Like you don't know if someone's going through depression, going through a divorce. Just because someone loses weight doesn't mean they're any healthier. Our study showed that the incentive is not what motivated people, at least in this design. 81% of employers with 200 or more workers and health insurance plans offered weight loss, smoking, cessation, or lifestyle coaching programs according to a 2015 survey. Two-thirds of large companies offered workers cash or merchandise for participating in these programs. The survey found with 34% offering lower premiums or lower cost sharing. The health law encourages wellness incentives by increasing the maximum reward for workers for outcome-based wellness incentives from 20 to 30% of the cost of health coverage and up to 50% if the program is aimed at reducing tobacco use. I don't know. What do you think? If your work said, hey, we're going to pay you and give you better health insurance if you lose weight, I would honestly tell them to F off. I'd be like, I'm in this office working for you and don't tell me what to do with my body. Just don't tell me what to do with my body. I would actually like not subscribe to this. What do you think? I'd love to know your perspective. If you were listening to this episode and your workplace offered this premium, offered this reward, how would you feel about it? They think that the study might have had issues like the $550 premium discount may not have been large enough. Do you know what? We should be paying people to self-care, not to lose weight. It just comes down to that extrinsic, intrinsic motivation. Extrinsic motivation doesn't last, it doesn't stick, and people are less likely to achieve their goals. And when it comes to weight loss, it can be really damaging because it reinforces beliefs that you're not okay the way you are. Now, the other thing to note is in these studies, the employers didn't actually pay their staff until they lost the weight rather than making like a separate payment if ongoingly they also weighed themselves at work rather than at home like how awkward one of the issues with motivation is if the reward is right at the end like the money people are not motivated people should be encouraged along the way and as mentioned if you want to encourage someone positively like a child or a teenager Say, do you know what? You've been really sticking to this sports group or this gym attendance. I'm so proud of you. Let's celebrate at the end of the month. Something like that. Celebrate their consistency. Celebrate their dedication. Celebrate their motivation. Not their weight loss goal. Celebrate their strengths. Like, wow, you know what? You bench pressed or you did this weight. Like, that's amazing. You're so strong. Like, celebrate their skill not their size. So how can we help our teenagers and young people foster a really positive environment? Lead by example. Show balance when it comes to food. Don't act like an almond mum that, oh, you know what? I don't need to eat. I'll just have a couple of almonds. Mums really try to promote (laughs) health-related behaviour by not eating and then eating in secret. Don't be that mum. Promote balance. Show your children you eat chocolate. Show your children you are not perfect. That's what they need to see. They don't need to feel 
horrible and awful because their mum is so clean eating and their mum exercises all the time and their mum goes to Pilates and never has chocolate. That's more damaging than seeing you being a real person. To emphasize health related behavior, not weight. To actually educate your teenagers about the benefits of nutrition and how it influences your mood and your energy. And that sometimes, do you know what? Yeah, we're not hungry when we want to eat chocolate, but sometimes there's psychological health and we want to have stuff because it makes us feel good. Or when we go to a birthday party, we have cake to celebrate our friends, even though we may not feel like cake. So give those good examples and help promote movement that's joyful. People try to force their kids to doing sport that they hate. If your kid wants to do gymnastics, let them do gymnastics. If they want to do horse riding, whatever it is, just I think what's more important is taking an interest in what interests your child instead of trying to sort of mold them into this version of yourself. And I think this might be something I might struggle with when I have kids is trying to mold them into my interests and what I like. And if they're the complete opposite, I think I would have a challenge with that. But that's a work in progress. No one's perfect. Build intrinsic motivation to help your teenager set achievable goals that are not focused on their weight. Maybe that's a strength goal. Maybe that's a community goal. Maybe it's a sport goal. And here's the most important one. Celebrate non-scale victories. So you're looking really bright, your mood, your energy, like, wow. Focus on those attributes that are to do with their weight. And the last two is open communication. Discuss your feelings and concerns with your teenager. Create an open dialogue where they can talk about body image, health, and self-esteem, and don't be judgmental. I was listening to a podcast on social media with your tweens, and rather than being like, oh, why do you follow that page? Or you spend so much time on your phone. Come from a place of curiosity and be like, oh, show me. What do you get up to? Who do you follow? And come from a place of interest, not judgment. Like, oh, okay. That's an interesting page that you follow them. Like, is that realistic? And just gently question who they follow and question, are they following celebrities? Are they following people who promote an unhealthy relationship with food? So try not to judge, criticize, or blame, but instead provide a safe space for expression, discussion, and curiosity. And of course, if you're worried about your teen, please seek professional help. If weight loss is a concern, speak to a healthcare professional that is balanced in their approach or a non-diety dietitian, et cetera. But overall, what it comes down to is really leading by example, but providing an example of balance and sustainability. I hope no one is paying their teenager to lose weight. If you resonated with this episode or you've experienced this, please let me know on Instagram. Don't be afraid to share the episode to someone who needs to hear this and make sure you follow and leave a review. Take care and I'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to today's episode. I am truly grateful for you being here. If you got something out of today's show, please take a moment to leave a rating or review. To access more resources or support, check out the show notes below. See you next time.